All right, so unit 10 has to do with conic sections. There are four different conic sections, which is shown at the top. And basically, if you would take a cone and take a piece of paper and slice it in different directions, you would make four different shapes. So we're going to start with the first one, which is a circle. So if you took a piece of paper, which is green, and sliced a cone horizontally, then you would end up with a circular shape. And that could be different lengths as well. The other three conic shapes will be learned if you take Sec 2 Honors. For Secondary 2, we are just going to discuss circles. So, the standard form of the equation of a circle we have discussed in this class, but this is a good review, is x minus h squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals the radius squared. And what you'll notice is that the center of the circle is at hk. And the radius, this is r squared, it's just a length of r. Okay. And then if you're given a point on the circle xy, you can also use that to find information if needed. All right. And so we can use this information in a variety of ways. So straightforward, if we want to write the equation of a circle and we're given the center and the radius. So since h is the x value of the center and k is the y value of the center and our radius is 10. So we can substitute that into the equation. Notice the form is minus the h value and minus the k value. So we can write y minus 0. Oops, sorry. Let's erase x minus the 0 plus y equals our r squared. Okay. Now, because these are zeros, you might see an equation that doesn't have that written next to it. And so the other way to write this would be x squared plus y squared equals, and then 10 squared is 100. Okay. Both of these are correct. They just look different. Part B. If we know the center, that would be h is 2, k is 3, and our diameter is 12, which means the whole length of the circle. So we want to take half of that. So that means that radius equals 6. So h is 2, k is 3. So by substitution, we would get x minus 2, y minus 3, and then 6 squared is 36. So this would be the standard form. Okay. So in example two, we want to determine the center and the radius given this equation. So what we notice is the center is going to be the numbers that are subtracted. So I always think of it as the opposite. Well, on this problem, there aren't any numbers next to it. So that means that the center is at zero, zero. And in the equation, this is r squared. So if we take the square root, we would get the square root of nine is three, and the square root of 4 is 2. So our radius would be 3 halves or 1.5. Okay. On example B, notice um, the formula is x minus. So really we could think of this as x minus a negative 3. Okay. And then y minus 5. So the center of this circle would be at negative 3 and positive 5. Notice it's going to be the opposite of the value that's written in the formula because of the general equation. Our radius, since that's r squared, take the square root of 81 and it breaks down evenly into 9. On part c, same idea, our center, we're going to take the opposite and the opposite and the square root of 1 is 1, so our radius is 1. All right, on example 3, we want to use the center and the radius to graph each circle. So first our center is going to be the opposite, so negative 2, and there's no value there, so 0. So I'm going to go negative 2, 0, and then our radius is going to be the square root of 64, so our radius is 8. So the easiest way is to go 8 in all four directions. So we're going to go to the right 8, to the left, we're going to go up, and then we're going to go down. And then you want to just try your best to draw or sketch a circle. Okay. Um, same idea here. Our center could be at zero. The opposite would be negative four. Our radius is a squared of 36, so our radius is six. So zero and then down four. 
And same idea, I'll go six in each direction. And then we just try to combine these. See, it's even hard after I've done it for all these years. <laughs> Okay, some harder problems could be if they give us an, some information about a circle and then they tell us that it passes through a point and then they want the equation. So what we want is this form. So remember, in order to do, the, to do this, we need to find um, the center and the radius squared. So we're given the center, so we know we can substitute that value. So this is h and k. So x minus 2 plus y minus 5. And I don't know my r squared, so I'm not going to use that yet. But it passes through this point, and so what happens is a point gives us an x and a y value. So this is just going to be another x and another y value that we can substitute. If it passes through a point, that means it needs to make the equation of the circle true. So by substitution, if x equals 5 and y equals negative 1, okay, we can substitute those known values and clean this up. So 5 minus 2 is 3. I'll just write this. Negative 1 minus 5 is negative 6. And that equals r squared, which we don't know. Okay, so 3 squared is 9. Negative 6 squared, make sure you use a parenthesis, is positive 36. And so add these together since they're on the same side. And so 45 equals r squared. Now, I could find the radius, but what I really need for the information is just r squared. So I'm going to take that 45, and we can just substitute it back into the general equation. Ah, I don't want to erase. <laughs> well, I don't think I can get that back. So we are going to get x minus 2 squared plus y minus 5 squared. And we found out that r squared is 45. And so that's what they want. Okay. All right, writing an equation with two points on the circle. So find the midpoint between the two endpoints and then follow steps 1 through 4. <clears throat> so our midpoint formula from lots of different sections is we add the two x values together and divide it by 2 and add the two y values together and divide by 2. Okay, so write the equation of a circle. We've got endpoints. I'm going to just make a little picture here to maybe help us. We've got negative 6, 5, 2, 3, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then 4, negative 3, and then 1, 2, 3. All right, and so what we know is that this is going to be the diameter. And so we kind of have a circle going like this. You know me and my circle drawings. So we need to find the center, which the center is going to be right in the middle. So to find the center, we need to know the midpoint. And you can count or you can use the formula. It's really a choice. So we're going to take the two x values and divide it by 2. And then we're going to take the two y values and divide by 2. So negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. If you're typing this into a calculator, you'll need to use extra parentheses around the numerator. 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And so at negative 1, 1, oh, that was pretty close, that would be our center. Now, we can find a radius, find that length, using a distance formula or Pythagorean theorem, or we could use what we just did for the equation of the circle passes through that point. Um, it's really going to be a choice. I'm just going to go ahead and use that. So I know if I write the equation of a circle, x minus negative 1, which is plus 1, y minus y, the k value, and that equals r value. So remember, you have two choices. I could do the distance formula. We could do draw a little triangle here and do Pythagorean theorem, or we could just, it passes through both of these points, so I could just use one of them to find my r squared. So if x is negative 6 and y is 5, we'll be able to find r squared, which is what we need. <laughs> 
So negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5, squared is 25. 5 minus 1 is 4, 4 squared is 16. Add these together and we get 41 equals r squared. So our equation is x plus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals our r squared. Like I said, there's lots of ways to do that problem. All right, back in, I believe it was quarter two, you learned how to complete the square. So if um, you were not here with me, you should have learned this in your in-person secondary two class, but I'm gonna do a quick review. So in order to get this in standard form, we want the squared terms, we need to do what's called completing the square. All right, so first thing is to put all the x's and the y's together. So I'm gonna put these two terms together and then we're gonna leave a little space. Then I'm gonna put my y terms together and leave a little space. The number I go to the other side, so I'm gonna subtract 16 and so that'll be on the right side of the equation, okay? So that's our first step. Now, from there, we're going to complete the square. So the way you do that is in your head, you're gonna take this middle x term, you divide it by two, and then you square it. So four divided by two is two, two squared is four. So that's what goes on the blank. Now to balance this out, I also have to add that on the other side. Then we're going to complete the square with the y term. So same thing, we're going to take this middle y term, we're going to divide it by 2, and then we square it. That's a squared. So negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4, negative square, 4 squared is 16. And so I need to add that to the other side as well. And so that process is completing the square. Now, what we want to do is we want to write this in factored form. So if we would take just this and we would factor it, I'll show it once the long way. The factors of 4 that add to give me 4 are 2 and 2. So x plus 2 and x plus 2, which ends up being x plus 2 squared. And so the shortcut I told you in quarter 2 was this term right here is always going to be whatever the original term was divided by 2. So let's use that concept on the y term. So we're going to have y, and then we take the original term and divide that by 2. So we get negative 4. Okay? On this side, you want to actually combine these. Oh, we got bigger. I don't know why it does that. <laughs> so negative 16 plus 4 plus 16 is 4. Let's see, and so this, I'm trying to, it's gonna erase it if I take this out. Um, yeah, it's not gonna make it smaller. Um, and I can't move it over. Okay, so that would be our equation. I know you can't see it, but you should have it written down. I'm gonna to have to exit so I can get back to regular size. And it did get rid of my answer, but that's okay. All right, let's try it again on example B. I'm gonna stay in the purple. So I'm gonna put my X terms together. Leave a space. Put the Y terms together. Leave a space. And then if we have any other numbers, we would move them to the other side, but we don't. So we're just going to keep the zero. All right, so now I'm going to do the completing the square part. So we're going to take the 6, divide it by 2, which is 3, and then 3 squared is 9. So that's what we're going to add to both sides. The middle term for the y completing the square, divide that by 2, which I get negative 2, and then we square that, which is positive 4. When you complete the square, it will always be a positive that you're adding to the other side. So then we're going to write our factored form. 
Just remember, it's the middle term 6 divided by 2, which is positive 3.